Hey guys, welcome back to the unboxing dito. For me, the Mi 10T series is one of the best value phones of 2020. It has an adaptive 144Hz refresh rate, large battery, and a Snapdragon 865 at a very affordable price. Pero one of the concerns ng mga tao about the Mi 10T series is the display. I often hear users say na sana instead of IPS LCD, AMOLED na sana yung ginamit nila. So in this video, I'm going to discuss three important things about AMOLED versus LCD. We are going to talk about how they work, yung advantage nila sa isa't isa, and finally, kung anong display ba yung mas better. My channel provides unboxing and reviews of all the hottest phones available today. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon para ma-notify ka each time mag-upload ako ng bagong video. So after all that, Let's proceed with the comparison video. So I have here two phones. On my left is the Mi 10T 5G for the LCD and on my right is the K30 Pro 5G for the AMOLED. So for us to understand each system, first let us define what they actually mean. AMOLED stands for Active Matrix Organic Light Emitting Diode. Breaking it down further, OLED is an LED in which the electroluminescent film is made up of an organic compound that emits light in response to an electric current. Also, LEDs are the ones we usually use among cell phones na nagbibling pag may notification ka. And also, yun din yung red dot sa TV monitors that indicates na na standby mode siya. Finally, the AM or the active matrix is the system of how each pixel is being controlled. Sa passive matrix kasi, each individual pixel is being controlled using a grid system where charges are being sent through columns and rows. Sa active matrix system kasi, it uses TFT or thin film transistor to cover the entire display like a blanket for faster and more precise control. IPS LCD on the other hand stands for in-plane switching liquid crystal display. This display system as the name suggests uses liquid crystals to refract light coming from a singular source. IPS or in-plane switching panels are defined by the shifting pattern of other liquid crystals which are aligned in parallel with one another. So after defining what AMOLED and LCD means, ang tanong ngayon is how does each system work? Sa AMOLED system, each pixel is composed of three tiny LEDs. Red, green, and blue na kaya magproduce ng sarili niyang light individually. Yung intensity of each light varies depende kung anong color yung kailangan kailangan niya i-produce. Since yung mga individual components niya ay hindi kaya mag-produce ng light gaya ng AMOLED, LCDs na tayo na backlight as their primary source of light. Light is polarized and then passed through a crystal element. Yung mga liquid crystals can be twisted to a different degree depende sa voltage na i-apply mo to refract light as it passes through. Pagkatapos nun, light will pass through another polarized filter na naka-offset ng 90 degrees compared dun sa first filter para ma-reduce yung final value niya. Lastly, a red, green, and blue filter is a Applied. Then these subpixels are grouped into pixels to adjust the color throughout the entire display. Basically, yung method na how they reproduce colors, yung main difference nilang dalawa. Ito rin yung reason kung bakit magkaiba yung components nila and how their structures were arranged. No display system is perfect. Both of them have pros and cons. And yan naman yung next natin pag-usapan. In theory, AMOLED display should be brighter. Mas kokonti kasi yung layers niya in between the light source and the glass itself. Compared kay LCD na ang daming layers na patong-patong. But believe it or not, yung mga early versions ni AMOLED has a huge problem when it comes to sunlight visibility. Kaya for outdoor use, mas preferred pa rin si IPS LCD. So for our indoor setting, we're going to use the ambient light sensor ni Redmi Note 9 Pro and an app called Lux Light Meter to measure yung luminosity ng both devices. We will do this test 3 times with a gap of 5cm from each device. So eto yung setup natin for our indoor luminosity test. Yung unit na nakarap sa atin is the Redmi Note 9 Pro and since we are in a completely dark room, it's showing zero sa lux meter niya. Now, let's unlock our Mi 10 T 5G para ma-measure na rin yung luminosity niya. It's currently showing between 5 to 6 lux. So, ito yung first trial natin. Ito naman yung second trial natin. For our second trial, it's between 6 to 7 lux. Here is our third and final trial. So similarly, it's between 5 to 6 lux. Now we are going to use our K30 Pro 5G. So sa unang test, it's currently showing between 8 and 9 lux. Now let's do our second trial. Similarly, it's between 8 and 9 lux. And for our third and final test, okay, so once again, it's showing 8 and 9 lux. Everyone appreciates a phone with an amazing battery life. And malaki yung contribution ng display type na ginagamit mo kung gano 
gano'n ba katagal yung SOT mo or screen on time bago siya malobat. Sa AMOLED displays, when it needs to produce the color white, yung tatlong RGB LED is being illuminated. And pag black naman, all of them are completely shut down. And that is the reason why you can achieve deep blacks pag AMOLED screen yung gamit mo. Sa case naman ni LCD, when it needs to produce the color white, yung mga liquid crystals is being arranged parallel sa direction ng light for it to completely pass through. Pag black naman, yung mga light crystals na nakaparallel kanina, ay na-arrange na perpendicular dun sa direction ng light to completely black ito. So, paano ka nga ba nakakatipid ng battery dahil dito? Simple lang. Sa AMOLED, pag black yung nasa display mo, yung ilaw namamatay completely. Thus, saving power. Now, I'm showing you two completely black pictures para makita nyo yung difference ng dalawang screen. At the top, si Redmi K30 Pro 5G to represent yung mga AMOLED screens and sa baba, si Mi 10T 5G para naman sa IPS LCD panels. Kung mapapansin nyo sa taas, si AMOLED is completely black talaga. Samantang sa baba, si IPS LCD is parang dark gray lang siya. Contrast is defined as the visual ratio of the different tones in an image. Dito sinusukat na yung ratio ng brightest pixel or usually yung pinaka white and kinocompare nila doon sa mga darkest. Sa case na to nakakalamang si AMOLED kasi nga deep black yung kaya mong ma-achieve sa display system na to. Now let's look at this picture right here. At the top, si Redmi K30 Pro with an AMOLED panel and at the bottom si Mi 10T with an IPS LCD screen. Sa AMOLED panel, you could clearly see yung distinction ng fireworks sa black night sky na background niya. Sa IPS panel, yung image ng fireworks itself is equally illuminated pero yung distinction nila ng background is not that evident. Saturation is the intensity and purity of a color being displayed. Mas mataas yung saturation, mas vivid and popping yung mga colors. AMOLEDs are known to offer deeper and more saturated colors. Kaya nga sa mga nakararami, mas prefer nila yung AMOLED kasi lively yung mga colors. Pero hindi porket mas maganda yung kulay, meaning mas accurate siya sa color representation. Kasi when it comes to color accuracy, LCD trumps AMOLED displays. In this picture, dahil mas saturated yung images ng AMOLED display, mas lively and vivid yung colors ng tomato. But in real life, mas nagdidepict ng true to color yung LCD panel. Most of you are probably familiar with the term na AMOLED burn or burn in, na usual problem sa mga AMOLED screens. Actually, yung term na burn in is kind of misleading kasi wala namang burning na nangyayari or any heat involved. What happens is due to time and overuse, slowly nagde-degrade yung mga pixels sa affected area kaya nagkakaroon ng discoloration. Usually, nakikita yung discoloration na to sa notification bar sa taas or sa navigation button sa baba. Sa LCDs naman, yung usual na may encounter mo is what we call image retention. And what happens is nagkakaroon ng ghost image or residual image sa screen. It could be an icon or image that the screen retains even after you exit. But don't worry kasi yung mga cases na to, although possible, is rare due to excellent durability and sustainability ng mga LCD displays. After we've discussed the advantages of AMOLED over LCD, CD, siguro nagtataka kayo why Xiaomi still opted to use LCD panels. This is because of two things, cost and yung adaptive sync display. Yung mga LCD displays kasi is significantly cheaper compared sa mga AMOLED screens. So kung yung goal mo is to produce a competitive but affordable phone, LCD is the way to go. With the Mi 10T series kasi, Xiaomi introduced what they call the adaptive sync technology with their 144Hz screen refresh rate. Dito kasi kailangan nilang itune yung display color profiles pati mga gamma values for different refresh rates na mas madali nilang ma-achieve LCD yung ginamit nila. So my final thoughts sa AMOLED versus LCD display battle is that no display system is perfect and lahat yan ay magbo-boil down sa personal preference mo and sa lifestyle. If you prefer yung mga true to color images rather than those oversaturated images which is the case with AMOLED screens then go with LCD. If you also plan to stick with your phone over an extended amount of time, say 4 to 5 years, go with LCD kasi yung durability niya is far better. But if you're a power user and you wanna experience great great battery life all throughout the day then AMOLED is the way to go. Dahil din sa higher contrast ratio and saturation lahat ng mga images mo will come out more lively and vivid sa mga AMOLED screens. So instead of debating which display system is better the question you need to ask yourself is alin ba sa kanilang dalawa yung better fit sa'yo? So what do you guys think? If you have questions and suggestions for our next video just hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to reply. So that's the end of our video and I hope nagustuhan nyo. Thumbs is a plus, subs is a must. I'm the Unboxing Tito and I will see you next time.